Heavyweight King Jack Johnson defended his title there twice before relinquishing it in Cuba. Carlos Monzon shined as bright as any light in Paris en route to his 15 successful title defenses. One of today's premier boxers, Julio Cesar Chavez, defended his first of three world titles on French soil. Tonight, a city rich in boxing history welcomes... The undefeated IBF middleweight champion of the world, Michael Sekintunan. Once this flashy middleweight added a knockout punch to his arsenal, the world championship was within his grasp. When he challenged Frank Tate for the title, Nunn dazzled the champion with a non-stop attack and seized the crown. A former two-time world champion, the return of the Lone Star, Cobra Donald. the undisputed world welterweight champion, many consider Donald Curry pound for pound the best fighter in the world. He became a two-time world champion as a super welterweight. could not dominate his opponents as he had in the past. Now he hopes to regain his luster as a middleweight. Tonight, via satellite from Paris, undefeated champion Michael Nunn defends his IBF middleweight championship against two-time world champion Donald Curry. Showtime Championship Boxing. Welcome to another edition of Showtime Championship Boxing. And good evening, everybody. I'm Steve Albert from our studio in New York. And tonight we will bring you a special co-production with Canal Plus, the leading pay cable company in Europe. We'll be calling the IBF middleweight championship fight via satellite from the Palais de Omni Sport in Paris, France. Undefeated Michael Nunn versus former two-time world champion Donald Curry. And following the fight, we'll have a roundtable discussion with a panel of boxing experts. But right now, I'd like to bring in my partner, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. And Ferdy, there are striking similarities between Michael Nunn and Donald Curry, both at one time considered pound for pound the best fighters in the world. Both have had their share of uh, managerial problems outside of the ring, Nunn with the Goosens and Curry with former manager Dave Gorman. How do you size up this confrontation? Well, I don't think those similarities are really uh, equal at all. I mean, the, the uh, problem with Curry was that he fell out of love with boxing. He got beaten three different times, and he just sort of abdicated his role for greatness. I mean, he was good. He was going to our greatness, and then he just fizzled out. Now he's back. That's a different problem from managerial problems. The managerial problem of none is he, he had a guy he didn't agree with, and now he's got Angelo Dundee, and he's very happy with Angelo. He's training well and changing into a more aggressive fighter. I don't think that similarity holds. It's a fresh, undefeated fighter trying to make himself a name on television against a guy that's trying to come back against three surprising losses. And both are almost uh, extremely driven. They've gotten to that point in terms of Michael Nunn. He's going for that big seven-figure payday. And as far as Donald Curry is concerned, he's going for that third world title and a return to yesteryear when he was one of the top fighters in the world. Those have to enter in as key factors, too. Well, I think the best and biggest thing for Curry is he was good. When he was good, he was the best. He was going toward greatness. When he stumbled and fell, how do you get that back? Two years go by. Your brain says, I'm back. I want it again. But your body says, yes, but you've been gone for two. Give me some break. I haven't trained. I haven't been there. So his body may not respond to what his brain says. That's what we're going to see today. The old Curry, the guy that was so good, would have had a tremendous chance against this nun, may have beaten him, may have come in as the favorite. As far as the other guy is concerned, nun, yeah, he's got to do something today on television. He's got to look good if he's going to get to seven figures. Otherwise, he's going to be the very best fighter fighting around this box office poison. 
All right. Now, when you look at the facts and figures, it would seem that both Michael Nunn and Donald Curry are in the pink. But looks can be deceiving. Despite the glorious titles and successful records, both fighters have experienced roller coaster careers. After watching him in the Junior Olympics, I knew he had the talent. I knew if we worked with him and we got him the things he needed, he'd be the champ. He's a world champion. He beat everything out there. Even though he's undefeated, uh, he's tarnished his image. Donald Curry, to me, uh, was the most promising welterweight I ever saw in the amateur. He's went through a career where he was one fight away from what I consider superstardom. Tonight, two boxers at the crossroads of their careers. A lot of people out there, they recognize my style. And they know that I'm one of the best boxers in the world. I mean, that's uh, part of my game, is to box and to punch when I have to punch. And uh, that's the name of the game, you know, I consider myself an artist. Well, the punch that he threw when he dropped him was a left hook to the solar plexus. And Mills Lane is carefully looking at Frank Tate. A blistering attack by Michael Nunn. The crowd going wild. And Mills Lane has stopped the fight. There's a new champion, a new IBF middleweight champion, and he is Michael Nunn. Now Nunn is starting to fire his punches with bad intentions. And he's had a big fight. left uppercut. That one lift and roll down off his feet. And I think that right to the body he threw before it was the hardest punch he's thrown in the fight, Michael Lowe. He's got roll down into some trouble. Down he goes. That was more an accumulation there of two or three punches in the combination. But he's in big trouble. That's going to be it. Startling turn of events by Michael Nunn, who got the wake-up call when Roll Dan landed his best shots. The Nunn jab continues to flick out against Colin Bay. Colin Bay is by nature. Oh my! A left hand sends Colin Bay down. A shocking turn of events in the first round. Sambu Colin Bay is out on the mat. I doubt if this one will continue. Michael Nunn's star was shining brightly throughout the universe of boxing. The sport was in search of a new superstar, and this fighter seemed worthy to fill the void. The Ten Goose boxing team had taken him from the amateurs to a world championship. Was the stuff that dreams are made of. I never looked at it as creating a world champion. What I always looked at it was a, a great team effort. No matter how great the management was, the training was, the advisement was, we still had to have an athlete that could deliver the punches and take the punches. So by no means did uh, any of us do it on our own, including Michael Nunn. Michael has everything that is necessary to be a great fighter. He does it well in the ring. The one thing you have to worry about is his mental frame and his condition. And those things were taken care of by the Goosens very well. A hometown hero and a Hollywood celebrity, Michael Nunn began to do more mugging in the ring than fighting. En route to winning a decision over Iran Barkley, Nunn refused to brawl, choosing instead to stick and move. last fight against Marlon Starling, Nunn was expected to physically dominate the smaller opponent. Instead, he coasted to a lackluster decision win. Well, the fans, you know, they're looking for a lot of blood and stuff, you know what I mean? Quite naturally, my style's not accustomed to that. Just set to and be able to just have a punch I would have got for 12 rounds. I mean, I try to capitalize on my physical attributes. That's my boxing and my speed. And uh, that's what's beneficial to Michael Nunn, and that's what's brought me this far. So 
why not use what's maybe successful. Not only has none been at odds with his fans, but also his management team. Goosen's contract was not renewed after the Starling fight. The Goose is out, Michael Nunn's in. Uh, I don't have no manager to this date. The uh, only thing I'm concentrating right now is on my fight, and I think that's what's important. When I first uh, turned professional, uh, with someone won three world titles, I knew I would grow into uh, a natural middleweight, uh, starting out as a welterweight. And I accomplished the two, as far as winning the welterweight title and the junior middleweight title. So now my incentive is to win the middleweight title. As the undisputed welterweight champion of the world, Curry was a cobra, striking without warning. Finishing an opponent without mercy. Curry was following in the footsteps of the other greats who had conquered the division before him, such as Armstrong, Robinson, Griffin, to be without peer. The only real challenges awaited him outside the welterweight division. An undefeated British boxer named Lloyd Hunnigan refused to be intimidated by the Curry mystique. A severe cut above the eye stopped Curry after the sixth round. At the time, he was trailing on all cards, and defeat seemed inevitable. The cloak of invincibility had been removed. And I think he was looking past Lloyd Hunnigan and looking toward the junior middleweight title and uh, possibly a showdown with Hagler or Leonard. There was several problems. I, I think going into uh, uh, my first defeat was uh, with the manager. Uh, also, uh, losing a loved one. Uh, maybe two or three days before the fight, uh, it suffered because I said I was mainly an emotional guy, and if I'm not there mentally getting ready for a fight and, and something disturbs me, then it takes my whole game apart. Problems with his manager continued for Curry. After several delays, he fought for a second world title. The distractions proved to be disastrous. situation where a uh, few distractions and uh, was physically ready but not mentally and uh, I was dominating the fight and boom. The Cobra forced Gianfranco Rossi into surrender and won a second world championship. It was far from the textbook victories Curry executed as a welterweight. The fire was still missing, and that lack of focus would cost him again. Going and fight a Rene Jaco situation, it wasn't the type of fighter that I needed to get up mentally for, or even physically for, and uh, I suffered a defeat. In the beginning, uh, boxing was everything to me, and after uh, I said my first defeat, uh, I wasn't as happy in boxing uh, because of different circumstances. And uh, I, I fell out of love with boxing. And uh, I had to go back and regroup myself over you know, the last maybe two years to fall back in love with it. And now it means everything to me. In the mid-1980s, Donald Curry was being hailed as the next Sugar Ray Leonard. But after unifying the welterweight title against Milton McCrory, he says he lost the passion. Ferdy, once you lose that passion, can you get it back? You can get the passion back, but does the body follow you? Uh, there is a, that has been a long lapse for him. 
One of the things that you have to do and develop a fighter is try to tell them that outside the ring things can be just as important as inside. You have to conquer what happens outside the ring and apply yourself inside. He failed to do that. Can he do that again? Are there other distractions in Paris? Can his body respond? That's what we're going to see. He was an excellent fighter before he got into that, the doldrums that gave him those three surprising losses. Can he really get that back? We'll see today. All right, after losing his super welterweight title in 89 to René Jaco in France, Curry didn't fight for 10 and a half months. He finally returned to the ring a day after Christmas, stopping veteran Brett Lally in the second round. And we've got action from that fight. This is two fights back. His third bout is a middleweight. Lally, incidentally, currently the USBA middleweight champ. And in case you were wondering, in his last fight, Curry KO'd Jose Duran Martinez in the fourth. Now, that's all well and good for it against Journeyman, but how about against Michael Nunn? Does he have the strength and the power to handle a bigger guy like Nunn? Strength and power and a bigger guy is a factor. What's a bigger factor than that is speed. Nunn is a fine defensive fighter, maybe the best defi defensive fighter. The guy qualifies for the Tour de France. He is the bicycle rider in boxing right now. Is he going to stop and fight? Can Curry cut him off? Can he get him into the shootouts that he needs to? That's what he needs to do now. It's not so much that he's bigger as we saw when he fought a very small welterweight and he stood way above him and did nothing. It can none do that again and get away with it. After all, you know, this guy is a ballet dancer against uh, a burlesque. He, he is quiche against meat and potatoes. I mean, what are we going to see tonight? Are we going to see a guy running around away from a smaller guy? Or are we going to see a guy try to make his point and try to stop Donald Curry? You're making me hungry. In any event, in terms of none, he was practically born and raised under trainer Joe Goosen, now out of the picture. Therefore, this being a period of adjustment under Angelo Dundee, is he susceptible? No, he's really not. Angelo Dundee is uh, maybe the finest a motivator, and what his, what his brilliance is due to is that Angelo can adapt to the talents of the fighter. He doesn't treat Muhammad Ali like he treated Sugar Ray Leonard. He doesn't treat Sugar Ray Leonard like he does Curry. He'll he, uh, None. He'll take none, take the best of what he's got, and he'll try to add that element of uh, strength, that element of uh, aggression that will make him a box office favorite because up to this point nobody's beaten none he really doesn't need angelo dundee what he needs angelo dundee to do is make him a complete fighter and a box office hit on the other hand now that he's solved his out of the ring problems in hiring angelo dundee as his trainer can he concentrate more on fighting as we said before if a fighter is so uh, mentally um, out of tune that he lets out of the ring things bother him then almost no one that was a great champion would have been a champion. Joe Lewis had his troubles, Marciano had his troubles, everybody had troubles. Ali had a world of trouble outside the ring. When you come into the ring, you leave all that behind. If none is to be the complete fighter that he can be, he's got to learn that you've got to close the door on the outside. Is he bothered now? No, he's very happy. I spent two or three days with him in Miami while he was training in the gym in Angelo's gym. I've never seen a happier fighter. There's a tremendous combination between he and Angelo Dundee right now. So what do you anticipate? Will none fight? Or will he go on his bicycle and bore the heck out of us? I think with Angelo slapping him on the uh, thighs and, and uh, cheerleading him on, I think we're going to see a different nun. I think we're going to see one that's going to take command and try to, get nun, uh, try to get Curry out of there if he can. In so doing, however, there is a risk that Curry could come back and knock him out. What can Curry do to engineer the upset? Well, he, he better start praying earlier today that Nunn is definitely going to stop and fight him. If he stops and fights him, Curry was a superb counterpuncher, very hard puncher. He, he was a one-punch knockout artist. He can only hope that Nunn tries to punch with him, because if he does, then Donald Curry can pull a gigantic upset tonight. And with that, let us take a look at the numerical breakdown, the tale of the tape. Michael Nunn at 27, two years younger than Donald Curry. Nunn with the two and a half inch height advantage, the weight almost even. Nunn a five inch reach advantage. To the IBF rules, 10 point must system, three scoring judges, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. So the stage is set, coming up momentarily, the IBF middleweight championship, Michael Nunn defending for the fifth time as he faces the number one rated Donald Curry. But first, these final pre-fight comments. Well, quite naturally by me being a champion, you know, I have a tendency to bring out the best in a guy. And that's going to be great because the better he is, the better Michael Nunn's going to be. I think Michael is very vulnerable now. Uh, I think it's a situation uh, from the last couple of fights he's had. He's, he's really asking to be beat uh, because he hasn't been at the top of this game. And if he fights against Curry the way he fights against Starling, and Curry indeed has come back, uh, Nunn is going to lose the fight. 
As far as I'm concerned, I made a statement to the press here two weeks ago. He's still the greatest boxer around, pound for pound today, at his best. And it's going to take a great one to lick him. I see Michael Nunn now as the guy that stands in Donald's way. He's one step away again. Curry, nobody's taking him cheap. He's a heck of a fighter. I want you to know that. And Michael Nunn's aware of that. My, Curry, to me, has his great nights. No, Michael Nunn will be ready for a great night from Donald Curry. I think that the best night not going to lick Michael Nunn because Michael Nunn, to me, is a heck of a fighter. Well, you know, true enough, I need a devastating uh, performance on October 18th in Paris, and uh, I'm looking forward to giving the public that. I want to win so bad. It's the title that I really want. And I haven't had that feeling in a long time of really, really wanting something or really wanting to win a fight. And uh, that's where the pressure's added back. But as far as being the underdog, uh, I think it's, it's, it's good for me because it takes a lot of pressure off in one way. But in another way, I want to win it so bad, so it puts it right back on it. scheduled for 12 the IBF middleweight championship Michael Nunn wearing the white trunks and Donald Curry in the blue will Michael Nunn come right out winging and try to end it fast the third man of the ring referee Danny Nelson out of Minneapolis Minnesota in fact, all of the officials are from the United States. The judges, Al Rothenberg, Sheila Martin, and Henry Grant. And the first flurry is offered by Michael Nunn. So far, Nunn has not done anything different than he usually does. He's, he is uh, trying to figure out the style of Curry. Every once in a while, he zings in a hard uppercut. Curry, for his part, is trying to get in close. So he can bang with a taller and left-handed nine. Not at 6-1, Curry 5, 10 and a half. Two minutes remaining in round one. Nunn is so hard to hit, bobs and weaves, uses the clever footwork. Really has a ring presence and a command in the ring. Right now you wonder why Nunn is standing so close, almost head to head with Curry, bending down, negating uh, his height. He could be standing back, jabbing and moving as is his usual style, but he's right in front of Curry, which is where Curry wants it. Vintage Donald Curry is a skilled counterpuncher, outstanding balance and excellent defense. Meanwhile, with Dundee, none working on snapping the jab, unloading that left hand. Of course, that left uppercut is really a fierce weapon in his repertoire. And they're also looking to perfect his balance and just overall fine-tune him. Curry's landing some hard left hooks. Right hooks bouncing off of none. Apparently, it's not bothering none any, but they will if they continue that way throughout the course of this fight. Curry can bang a little bit, remember. He is more willing to trade punches than he was earlier in his career as we have less than a minute remaining in the first round. Curry can stand and slug as effectively as he can box and move. There's a pretty good left by Curry. Up none. Those left hooks are beginning to land flush on Nunn's jaw. And that, when he gets back to the corner, Angelo's got to say, hey, don't just stand there and take those left hooks. Let's put your arms up. Let's put your hands up. As we approach the 22nd mark in the opening round. Curry doing very well for himself this first round. He's been standing there where he wanted to be. He's been landing hooks, one of which backed up Nunn considerably. Curry can weaken opponents with knifing shots to the ribs. He has done that plenty of the past. He did in the rematch with Marlon Starling. Less than good. You got to start going downstairs more and stop breaking your combinations up, okay? Quit headhunting so much. Our game plan is to work downstairs and come up, up, come up top real strong. You understand? Yeah. You understand? No, no, no. no. Don't you hook up on your right side, man. Go to the body and to the head. Or to the head and to the body. You got to keep your hands flowing. Your combinations are not flowing yet. The same okay. amount. Total concentration on is doubling up on the right side. Right on the 
Total, total concentration. Double up on your right side with that hook, okay? And move on the inside. When you when he throws right up, left uppercut, catch it and come over the top with your hook. The hook is going to work okay. for you, okay? But don't You're let right. him start first. Okay. Let's go, baby. Don't stop. Round two scheduled for 12, the IBF middleweight championship, a good first round for Donald Curry. And in his corner, he's been told that hook is working. Double up the right hook. Every time he tries an uppercut, catch it on your glove and come back with a hook on top. Well, his hook is working for Curry. I gave him the first round because the hook has been more effective than anything none has done. None fighting uncharacteristically close by, almost trying to pump uh, punches with Curry. That's not his fight. His fight's outside, using his superior boxing tool. Right? Just then. That's his fight. Some action here in the center of the ring as Michael Nunn airs it out. Effective with that left uppercut, but holding with the right hand. All the officials are from the United States. The referee is Denny Nelson out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. The judges Al Rothenberg, Sheila Martin, and Henry Grant. Donald Curry now comes back. They told Curry to go more to the body between rounds and concentrate more. Go to the body and then come up with a head with a hook. He's done that several times and caught none completely by surprise. There was a combination by Curry, but did have full impact. I tell you, none is, is punching tentatively. He, he's not winging those punches. Uh, he's almost trying to find him with the punches. That's odd in, in a guy that's as uh, good a puncher as uh, none is from outside. Inside, he seems a little bewildered. Not his field of battle. None of the white trucks, the southpaw. Curry in the blue going to the uppercut. None's hands are at the side. Very careless when you're fighting a class fighter like uh, Curry. Curry, former two-time world champion, but not going for his third world title. And looking to continue his comeback. It looks like a blotch of uh, red blood, as far as you can see on your screen, on the forehead of uh, Donald Curry, which could be a, a cut, or it might be just a, a fleck of blood from the mouthpiece that's ended up there. Around 45 seconds remaining in the second round. Curry has been cut on a couple of occasions in the past against Lloyd Hunnigan and Gianfranco Rossi. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round two. He has had a tendency in the past to lead with his head, talking about Donald Curry, and this might be the situation. That's why he gets cut, and of course, it looks like he's cut. The, the blood doesn't go away. It doesn't look like a fleck of blood is going to be gone away. It's still there. So it looks like maybe a cut right between the eyes. As we head for the bell, round two. straight up move over give them the angles okay well, let's see that jab ball they love it deep breath another one nice and smart now baby don't use your cool okay nice and smart <clears throat> let's see your boxes sucker you can box, box. give me the mouth give him the grief close your mouth michael speed close your mouth I want speed, my piece. I got it. Give me speed. Speed, speed. I'd be crazy. Now, see. Be first, Tom. Be first. Percy Richardson working diligently on that cut on the forehead of Donald Curry and Michael Nunn says one of the qualities he loves about Angelo Dundee is the great advice he offers with all of his expertise. And Nunn says, I'm a great listener. Let's see if he listens to him here in round three. Well, what Angelo wants is speed. That's what he should have had at the beginning. Why he got into, uh, into that blow-by-blow -blow kind of thing at the, at the, in the first round is, is beyond me. Down goes. That's just a push down. That's nothing. In fact, he was even helped up by Nunn, which gets that reaction from the crowd. French-like gallantry. Yes. 
into round number three of the IBF middleweight championship. We thought the first round went to Donald Curry. What do you think about round two? I thought round two, none began to establish his speed. He, when he got out of fighting hand-to-hand, -hand, he went back out again. That left-handed style is causing trouble for Donald Curry. He's got a cut. He's going to start fighting with desperation pretty soon. The cut is on the forehead of Donald Curry in the blue trunks. The third man of the ring, Denny Nelson. Curry going to the body. Now none retaliates to the midsection and the head. And you can hear Angelo hollering even across the Atlantic. Get out of there. Give him angles. Back up. Use your head. Use your speed. He doesn't want him in here. They're banging heads. And, of course, you can get cut just as easily as the other guy when you're banging heads. See that? That's just two bulls banging heads right there. And a lunging shot by Donald Curry that connected. Looks like Nunn is aiming for that cut. Well, Nunn is fighting with a great deal of energy and brio. He uh, may not be the Nunn of old, but he's certainly fighting courageously here. He's, he is taking the fight to Nunn. He wants to get him. He wants to get into that kind of shootout in close. So far, Nunn has obliged him in the first round and just about did it in the second. Michael Nunn certainly wants to silence his critics who say that he is not a crowd pleaser. Not dancing away from Donald Curry. Nunn is just so difficult to catch. I think the size has a lot to do with this. Uh, the layoff by Curry has a lot to do with this, but you are fighting a quality fighter and a six foot one good left hander as a middleweight. Well, that, that's the description of a guy that's hard to hit. None of you wants to fight from outside, box, control with the left jab, can do a, job, a job on Curry. Under 20 seconds in round three from Palais de Omni Sport in Paris, France. Well, this continues this way. We'll certainly see what kind of a chin Nunn has got. And Curry ends round three with a pretty good flurry. You got to be first. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. You got to be first, Take down. Hold it. Don't mess around. Look, be perfect. You got your range. You got to be first. You got to be the aggressor. Give me a lot of feints, Donald, and then take it to him. A lot of feints. Make him commit himself, then you go, okay? Once you close it up to, with that right hand to the body, you got to follow up. Don't lock up on me in there. Give me some two and three point combinations. Strong, okay? The hands is what's going to do it for you. Give me some hands. I don't want no singles and doubles. Combinations. Think combinations. That's what I want you to think. Anytime this joker stands in front of you, faint him. Make him go for it, then you count his faint, okay? You count him when he moves. Okay, D? Let's go, Della. Let's put him Come together. on, pick it up, baby. Put Let's together. put him together. Let's put him together, baby. Deep together. breath. Fill him up. Okay, let's go. With marvelous Marvin Hagler looking on, we enter round four. You could see the fairly deep gash on the forehead of Donald Curry. The headbutt rule, if it's before the sixth round, a fighter can't continue. It could be a technical draw. If it's after six rounds and they go to the headbutt rule, they go to the scorecard. It is now round four, and Curry has a pretty good cut on the forehead. But it is in the forehead and not in a dangerous area. If that cut continues to go up toward the hairline, it makes no difference as far as judging and stopping a fight. If it goes down into the eye, big trouble. Now Michael Nunn opening up a bit. You know, Michael keeps getting hit by these jabs. Uh, again, two good hooks. Hooks, jabs, and uppercuts. Curry is landing. So I, I don't think I remember seeing Nunn get hit this much by anybody. Curry able to flick the jab with authority, and then he comes right back with the right. Now uppercuts, doubling up with the right effectively. Remember, Curry's round wants double punches. If you land the first, the second's going to land. That hook keeps coming and gonging none right on the jaw. How much can he take of this? The crowd is behind Donald Curry in the blue trucks. They're familiar with... Curry, who has fought in Europe in the past. You hear Angelo, get out of there. Get out of there. 
Look at this. Hands down. Nunn is playing with fire. We are past the midway mark of round four. Angelo Dundee wants Michael Nunn to jab more, box more, and be smart. He wants speed from this guy. He wants to make him look good in combinations. He hasn't been doing that. He's been standing there, letting the other guy tee off. Now comes none at his best. A lot of combinations going. Most of those, however, aren't landing. I mean, notice the defense of Curry while these punches are flying through the air. Yes, none retaliating, but they seem to be soft shots. Not really having much impact on Curry. When these punches are flying through the air 5, 10, 15 at a time, keep your eyes focused on the gloves of Curry. Watch him pick this off. Look, look at the way he picks that off. There's Angelo. Move over Mike. He doesn't want him in front of this guy because he's getting hit. That's why he doesn't want him in front. He's starting to load up. Now that he knows he can hit him flush, he's starting to load up on the hook. And final seconds of round four as we head for the bell. Some more, Rick. I need more ice. Give me the foul. Go ahead. Okay. Michael, you got you got don't clown, don't keep your hands down. Now cut it out. Give me that. Hold that. You know what I mean? I know it ain't nothing, but you're getting hit with shots for no reason. I want you moving over. Only way this guy can hit you if you're in front of him. He's got no legs. Got no legs. Well, put some snap in that jab. Come on. Put some come on. Hold it. Pull the gloves. Come on. Come on. Oh. Now you can see how full these shots are landing right on. The, and that's why Angelo's saying to him, move over. He doesn't want him in front. That's like standing in front of a, a cannon. And now, so far, I have Curry had 39, 37. Those last two rounds have become uh, a sort of testing ground for Nunn's chin. Can he take this kind of punishment for a long time? Well, let's see when he gets on a bicycle. Right now, he's got a roaring start to the bicycle. Now that's none. Moving around, snapping the left jab, waiting for his opportunity to land. Why he's been fighting the other fight, only he can tell you. And we headed into round five, and a lot of folks didn't think it would go this far. Well, it all depended on what kind of conditioning Curry showed up with and what that layoff took out of him. And Angelo Dundee pretty much confirmed what uh, you were talking about in the previous round. The more clowning around that Michael Nunn does, the more trouble he gets himself into. Now, remember, these punches are cumulative. They don't just land once and that's it, and then you're rubbed off the scoreboard. They keep affecting you. They get you dizzy, and pretty soon you become susceptible to more. And, of course, Curry is punching harder and harder with every round. As he sees himself in a good position here, he's getting energetic. Look at this. And while Michael Nunn mugs in the ring, Donald Curry trying to uh, go to work. What you look like is an underdog who is working extremely hard to take each round as if it were the final round. And Nunn is fighting as if he, were, he had all the time in the world and he'll pull this out at the end. He can just have a little fun here. And that's not the way it is, folks. Every round counts. And Donald Curry, of course, can just throw caution to the wind. What does he have to lose here? Michael Nunn stands to lose the title. And a great deal of prestige and a great deal of money. And as we mentioned earlier, he is driven to get to that big seven-figure payday. Meanwhile, Donald Curry would love to get that third world title. Curry missed his chance just then. When he has him up against the ropes, Nunn stops fighting, and he builds up a three or four punch advantage. Look at that shot. Good right by Donald Curry. That snapped Nunn's head back. Nunn comes back with a combination of four or five punches, some of which landed. Not very hard, though. Not with a lot of conviction, certainly with no evil intention in it. And there he goes again, negating his size. He, he comes head to head with him. Why? That 
that's that's the jab that should be controlling that right jab that snaps and pops and bewilders Curry and builds up points. That's what controls it for none. He has not been doing that up to now. He better start. None going side to side. Lateral movement now, as Angelo Dundee urged him to do. Not a stationary target. He'll make Curry try to chase him down. See how Curry has slowed down as soon as Nunn started to box. Curry's just stood back and watched him. Uh, he has not attempted to come in. And therefore, that's how Nunn won that round. There you go. There you Deep go. breath. Looking Deep better, breath. Big Don. Deep breath. There's a way to work. Look, when you take this guy to the rope, the mouth. when you take this guy to the ropes, I don't want you standing up with him, Donald. Keep your bend in the waist. Break him down at the body, then go to the head. Don't reach over the ropes out. You understand? Stay with that body and then explode to the head. Don't get too uh, start head hunting too much. Keep breaking him down. Come around to come around to his right, Donald. Don't stay in front of him all the time. Yeah. Try to move to your left. Try to move to your left. You're flowing now. We just need some combinations. Combinations, sir. Down. After you punch, don't stand there and lock up. Give me a little movement. Try to make him got, got missing, then move thinking, back. Buddy. Keep thinking. Think. Think. Keep I think. know what you're doing. Think. Good job. Deep breath. Deep breath, Sam. Put them yeah. together. Put them together. There's that nice right hand punch that gonged off none. Had a little effect, but not that much. And uh, none continue to box to win that round. One of the things you have to remark when you. What, what's so important is great cornerman. Percy Richardson, one of the best cut men in the business because he has such enormous experience, uh, has stopped this cut. It, has, it is not bleeding. It is not a factor anymore in this fight other than it can continue to open, but he has negated it as a uh, factor in this fight. Has Percy Richardson. Coming to you from the Palais de Omni Sport in Paris, France, the IBF middleweight championship. Steve Albert and the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, calling the fight from our studio in New York. And it is now into the sixth round. Well, if none is waiting for uh, Curry to slow down and to sort of wear out like fighters do who have been off a long time, you may have a surprise because Curry looks fresh. He looks like he wants to keep on going and keep this combat going. Again, the movement by Dunn, that uh, point building and saving movement. Curry trying to bob and weave. And he is getting hit. Punch. Nunn is scoring the points there. This is the fight that Angelo wanted him to fight and the fight that uh, can win this fight for him. Seems to be something on the glove of uh, Nunn. Must be some Vaseline off, off of uh, Curry's face. Michael Nunn having his way now with Donald Curry. Turning him around with his shoulders and able to unleash. Well, the secret is he's there fighting. I mean, he is fighting his fight and movement. Now, all of a sudden, he's gone back uh, to uh, head to head. And got hit for it. A solid right there, snuck in by Donald Curry. As soon as they get inside, watch the number of times that Curry lands. As soon as they get outside, see how ineffective Curry is. And that's the key, distance. Michael Nunn allowing himself to be hit, as opposed to the last two fights with Marlon Starling and Iran Barkley, he was much more elusive. And he was on the stay away point in those fights. <laughs> oh, he just got hit two hammering shots by Curry. Donald Curry and the crowd loving it. Well, Nunn looks like he's saved up all his energy for the whole for this round because he's thrown more punches this round than he has the whole fight combined. This is the old Nunn that punches in bunches. This is more than none we saw against the Frank Tate and uh, Juan Rodan. And that is it for the sixth round. And if we went to the scorecards here, we'd have a dead even, 57-57. None having taken the last two rounds by returning to what got him to be the champion. Don't run in. Don't run in, okay? 
Don't go running straight in. Throw a feint once in a while, okay? You know how to do better than that. Don't run in. Want a little more water? You all right? That scorecard okay. shows 57 to 57 because none has Come decided on. to return to form. Box, throw a lot of punches, bewilder Curry so that Curry can't get okay. off, can't get off those deadly uppercuts and hooks and that won him uh, round three and four. And this is round number seven. Scheduled for 12, but the question is, is Michael Nunn sacrificing the fight to please the fans? Well, I don't think he's doing too much to please the fans. I mean, outside of getting hit and showing he can take a, a punch, he hasn't been impressive here. He has fought uh, a Michael Nunn kind of fight the last two rounds, but before that, he was just getting clobbered by, um, by Curry. I mean, that, that doesn't exactly... Um, make you a favorite well this has not been a uh, highly spirited affair to this point well it was one-sided spirited <laughs> curry is spirited he's coming in and trying to get things done not using his superior defensive skills not to permit him and of course that's what boxing's about Now, one of the eerie things about fighting in France and Italy, those places, the crowd doesn't holler during the fight. They usually applaud at the end of a round, like a theatrical performance, and it's unnerving to the fighters. Sometimes you come back and think, is there anybody out there? Almost like a club fight uh, in Atlantic City where the crowd is sort of hush-hush. They're too busy worrying about their losses. And here, in all fairness, there are two Americans fighting for a Parisian crowd. If one of the men were from France or Italy or Germany or one of the places that were Europeans, you'd hear a lot more holler. Right now, they're trying to make up their mind who they want to cheer for. And right now, neither man has given an awful lot of reason to cheer for the other. Well, they haven't really had much to erupt about as of yet. We're midway through round seven. They seem to be siding more with Donald Curry. The underdog. with Curry should have stepped back and really gotten a uh, flurry out like he had before. He had him cornered and he let him get off the hook. As long as Curry lets none out to bounce around, he is going to lose this fight because he doesn't have the speed nor the size to stay with uh, none. Now Michael Nunn going to work. And down goes Curry. The pressure by Nunn sending Curry down to his knees. Six, seven, it didn't look much eight, like eight. a knockdown as much as it did a cave-in. It looked like he just sort of caved in. And now let's see if Nunn can continue. As he looks to finish Curry off here in the seventh. Well, he looks weakened. He does not look like he's in big trouble, but he does look weak. He looks like one good shot could put him down again. Curry looking a little dazed, but it looks like he'll make it through the seventh round. So a bit of a shaky Donald Curry back to the corner. You want this thing, babe? Don, let's go. Don, can do it, babe. Right. Let's go. All right. Your tape, All okay? Right. Now you got to go with the hard right, right hand. Come on. All right. Keep your hands going. Behind in the fight. Okay. Let's Keep go, your baby. hands going, baby. Don't move straight back on defense, Donald. Move lateral. You can win this thing. Move lateral. Don, you hear me? I said you can win this And this should be the knockdown where we see it's actually an accumulation of punches that, that put uh, Curry down. As I say, a slow cave in. Punches continued way after he was down. And of course, I think that's not intentional. It's just you got your punches going. And uh, you got to dig down and get it. Got to let it you see, he's still down and punching. And of course, uh, the referee didn't call it. And I don't think that was intentional. Part of none of the extremely clean fighter. You got to let it hang now. Keep your hands. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up and let the punches go. Got to be free. Shoot down, shoot down. Let your hands go. Got to be A lot of chatter in that curry corner as we head into round number eight. Well, I like the power of positive thinking. They're, they're, they acted like the other guy got knocked down. He said, now you got him. Go back and get him punching and bunches. Do this, do that. I, it was almost like uh, it wasn't him that got knocked down. It was the other guy. Let 
Yes. Well, he didn't. He, he was already punching back with a lot of steam at the end of the round was uh, Curry. So I don't think that, the, as I say, it wasn't. Uh, it was an uppercut and a hook and various punches. They didn't look, they didn't look like they were really damaging. He sort of just caved in. I think the final blow there was the best weapon of Michael Nunn, the left uppercut. Ah, Not some taunting by Michael Nunn. He's feeling his oats. Nunn playing around, but that was the point at which Curry could have built up some points. He did hammer home some good body shots, but he's got to get a lot more of that done. Now he's really behind because that last one was a 10-8 round, and he's behind 67-65. to 65. And now he's got a little bit of work cut out for him. Nunn just opening himself up to shots to the midsection, but Curry did not take advantage. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let the right hand go. Let the right hand go. In order for none to sparkle like the American public wants him to, he would have had to come back and look great after that knockdown, take advantage of the weakened condition of Curry and finish him off. That he did not do. He backed off, and uh, he will be criticized for that. Instead, he continues to stick to that elusive style. Staying away from Donald Curry. Curry has to lunge to make contact there, but it wasn't a very effective blow. The size and, and the uh, leg speed of none, too much for uh, Curry. You know what you have to say, after seven rounds in which one, he was knocked down on one, Curry's got pretty good legs. He's still bouncing around. He's still there in front of him. He hasn't got any kind of wobble to him. He certainly paid uh, paid the price to train himself well to come in here. He might be a little overmatched because of size and hand speed and foot speed of none, but he's given a credible account of himself. That was only the third time in his career he was knocked down. Quang and McCallum put him to the canvas in previous fights. And we're talking about the 36 professional fights and two world titles. Curry 33 and three with 24 knockouts, none. At 35 and 0 with 23 KOs. Not off his April 14th majority decision over Marlon Starling to retain the title. Curry off a fourth round knockout over Jose Martinez. Final seconds of the eighth round. Son, they love you. They love you. They love you. Carter, there's point seventy seven, seventy four. Curry obviously Make taking the last uh, two rounds. The um, last go. round barely. It wasn't that big, but uh, Curry fought back. None, just a little bit superior because of his size and speed. Now, what Angelo wants is finish the show. He, more than anybody, is aware of what makes a box office phenomenon. Right now, none has to finish the show in order. He doesn't want him to clown around. He does stick to business. Of course, Angelo should know about clowns. See, he was in the corner of the two biggest clown around fighters that's ever been, Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray. Round nine. Come on. Well, the power of positive thinking, he was urging Michael Nunn on by saying that they love you here. And that the other guy is scared. Michael should have said, how do you know? Nobody said anything so far. Well, he doesn't understand French. You know, that's not anything on their gloves. It's a label on their gloves. They're both of them got that white on their gloves. Yeah, both gloves have some kind of white label on them. Those are 10 ounce Reyes gloves, in case you were wondering. Curry trying to measure Nunn up, but uh, Nunn is just too quick. Just darting away from those shots. I think he has a great deal of confidence. He knows he has this fight just about one. All he has to do is keep doing what he's doing uh, to win. 
Curry has right. not yet shown the desperation of a guy that, real, that, that realizes, hey, I, the only way I can beat this is to knock this guy out, so I better swarm all over him. He hasn't done that yet, nor has his corner sent him out to do that. And Curry just got rocked with a left uppercut, which is the calling card of Michael Nunn. Well, it's been a long, long time since uh, Curry has landed the left hook that was working so well for him in the first far, uh, five rounds, it's almost as if he's abandoned it. He hasn't. It's just the fact that Nunn has not gotten him close to get hit by it. As long as you're way out here, you can't land it. Curry trying to avoid uh, his fourth defeat. He lost to Lloyd Hunnigan, Mike McCallum, and Rene Jacquot. Come talked so much earlier about the passion, the love of the sport of boxing. And as far as Donald Curry is concerned, he said uh, a few fights ago he lost that passion. Will he lose the will here against Michael Nunn as Nunn turns it up a notch? Nunn trying to close the show. He wants to close this big. Curry's getting hammered, but he's still standing there. Legs still holding him up. First time he's clutched with desperation. He's holding okay, on. Now Come the referee on. has Go got ahead. to wrestle him free. That means Curry is beginning to abdicate. Curry looks tired, surviving an earlier knockdown. It seemed like he did retrieve a second win for a while there, but now it looks like he's a little wobbled. He is holding on. There's no question about it. He has gone over that point where he thinks he can win this fight. He's now trying to survive it. And none knows it. He's just stalking and hounding. And that is round nine. Three more rounds, Don. Stay with him and let them hands go. Keep got to be first. Down now. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Clear with me. You understand tenth what I'm saying? Tenth round. Tenth round. Tenth. Come on. You got to be first. You got to let your hands go. Too, too much weight. Too much weight. That right hand is your phone to the body. Come on. Deep breath. That right hand you're pulling down to the body. Come on, let's go. Paint that right hand under the body and shoot the biggest hook you ever shot in the life. You got to be first. Donald, oh, you got to be first. Get in close. Paint that right hand down now to the body and shoot the biggest hook you ever shot in You can do it. Deep breath. Deep breath. Come on, champ. Hands up and keep Come on, look at me. You don't work too hard. Try Let's fight right down, D. Suck it up. Done. Let's fight down. Come on, done. 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 All right. Let's go. Clear? Let's way. fight down, D. Clear? This is where you can see how effective right Nunn is now all of a sudden getting hurt. He's trying to close the show. He just wants to put this guy in, as Angelo said. And watching his marvelous Marvin Hagler, a guy that must be licking his chops, thinking, I could still do that. I could get in there and beat these two guys. And at one point, both Donald Curry and Michael Nunn were pursuing marvelous Marvin Hagler. Interesting that in the corner of Curry, they didn't give him any instructions of survival, but they keep telling him, throw the right hand, double up on the right, as if he had uh, a great chance to land that right hand. At this distance, uh, he can send a telegram with it, but he's not going to hit anybody with it. Well, we reach round number 10, scheduled for 12. Michael Nunn of the White Trunks looking to retain his IBF title, defending for the fifth time. Donald Curry in the blue came in looking for his third world championship, but right now does not look good. Now look at that left jab of Michael Nunn. Now that he knows he's in full command, he's got the distance that he knows the other guy can't cross that, that territory without getting clobbered. He can stand out and just throw it. Watch, watch the jab. That's the thing of beauty. It's like those little toys you buy with a string that pulls out the jab. That's the way he's throwing it, and he's landing. Look at that. Except for a few moments, it has been all Michael Nunn. But a lot of folks, I'm sure, are surprised that it has gone this far. Maybe including Nunn, who wanted to end it early and quiet some critics. Maybe including Curry. Yeah. <laughs> who uh, certainly had, uh, has had his uh, bad nights recently, and right now he's going to have another one because Nunn has now tried to close the door. He's tried to finish this fight, and he's got a minute and 20 to do it, and already Curry in trouble. Curry in good trouble here, or bad trouble. Nunn pouring it on, and Denny Nelson looking intently, and that could be it. He just took a shot kneeling down. It could well be it, and the referee could well stop it. I don't think there's any problem with this stopping it here, and he does. It's all over. Denny Nelson has stopped the fight. And Michael Dunn retains his IBF middleweight championship here in the 10th round.
So Michael Nunn defends his middleweight championship convincingly, but not excitingly. He did get the job done, though. That may be the capsule to his whole career. He wins, but not excitingly. And that means that he can't get these big bucks that a Sugar Ray Leonard, that a Tommy Hearns can get. And I really wouldn't know what to tell him to change to get it. But prior to the 10th round stoppage, you had none ahead. I had him way ahead, I think, at the beginning of the fight. As you see on the scorecard, he let Curry get in the fight. He was doing his thing. He was bending over, and he was letting Curry get into the fight. As soon as he stood up and st started taking advantage of his size, his jab, and his speed, he became uh, uh, confident that he could carry it through to a knockout, and of course he did. I had it ahead 87-83, and it's more or less in that ballpark. And, Ferdy, the judges in Paris uh, wholeheartedly agree. Uh, for example, Grant had an 88-82, Martin 89-81, and Rothenberg 89-81. We'll be joined by a panel of boxing experts for a post-fight discussion in a few moments. But first, we'll go back to Paris for post-fight reaction. Let's hear from a jubilant Michael Nunn, who spoke with British TV. Now, what do you think of Don Curry? Brave Don Curry's a great right? fighter. I take nothing from him. You know, I, I watched him as a kid. I idolized him. He's a great fighter. And I, he'll always be a great fighter. I mean, he gave it his all. He's a two-time champion. I don't take nothing from him. Did he hurt you often with the right No. He hit me with a couple good right. He punches pretty good at uh, middleweight. I mean, he's a good puncher, but I mean, I take a great shot. You know, I've been down once in 36 tell fights, so I'll tell you something. You had him going in the seventh. Why did it, you had him going in the seventh. Why did it take in what round? You had him going in the seventh. You had him down here. One seven round. Why did it I take wanted to catch my win a little bit and come back and get strong so I can finish him later because I knew he was going to stay hurt. That's why I was hitting him to his body because I knew Don was going to stay hurt going into the later rounds and I could pick the pace up on him. It's good to see a great boxer around. Thank you very much. And I can thank everybody over in Paris for coming out giving me the more support that Michael Nunn needs. And I will return. Thank you very much. And the word from Donald Curry in Paris is that Michael Nunn was uh, simply too big and too strong for him. He is contemplating uh, retirement, but uh, still keeping it up in the air. I think that's one of the choices he and he alone have to make. His management team have to talk it over with him. But off of what we saw in here, uh, it's a consideration that he'd have to make. Unless he can get paid a lot of money, I, I don't really understand why he'd want to continue. All right, at this point, we'd like to welcome to the studio our panel of boxing experts. And we begin with former WBC and WBA welterweight champion Marlon Starling, who has stepped into the ring with both Michael Nunn and Donald Curry. We also have one of the most highly regarded managers and trainers in the game today, Emmanuel Stewart, who has worked against both Nunn and Curry over the years. And fight fans have seen this man's byline many times, John Saraceno, boxing writer for the USA Today. And John, you've had a chance to uh, closely watch both Nunn and Curry on the rise. Did Nunn uh, accomplish what he set out to do? I think Michael's satisfied with the fight, but personally I'm not, because I think Michael should have been able to knock Donald Curry out, particularly once it was apparent that Donald was running out of steam, which was midway through the fight. Uh, and I think from that perspective, it wasn't all that impressive of a performance. Emmanuel Stewart, uh, you've had occasion to tell boxers many, many times it's time to hang up the gloves. Would you say that right now to Donald Curry? I definitely would tell Donald to hang him up. You know, in this particular fight here, you could see it was not so much at the last half of the fight of what, you know, all that actually was happening from the viewpoint of none as much as it was that his leg was gone there was no more zap and uh, uh, you only fight for fame and fortune I think uh, he's gained a lot of fame already in his career and he's made money and I think he should get out of boxing at this point in time Marlon Starling you have fought both Michael Nunn and Donald Curry how would you compare the two well it's a difference of night and day I think uh, Michael Nunn is a far superior fighter than Donald Curry I think um, Donald Curry better days are behind him and we're all looking for something spectacular to happen from Michael Nunn. Tell me, who, who do you think Michael Nunn could fight now to get any kind of money? I mean, who, who would be out there to fight? Oh, I think the only fight I can see uh, Michael Nunn having is uh, a fight that dethroned that th that th him early in his, uh, when he was an amateur, and that is um, Virgil Hill. Maybe that can come about. As a light heavyweight. As a, as a heavyweight. middleweight, for example, Sugar Ray is on his last uh, fights, which we've been waiting for for many years. It <laughs> seems like he, would he have a chance? Would Sugar Ray have a chance with Michael Nunn? No, not right now. Ray Leonard is a very wise businessman, and I don't think Ray uh, take a fight like that in his, right now in his career. Do you think, uh, Emmanuel, that uh, uh, Sugar Ray fighting Norris is a smart fight now? Do you think he's come uh, to almost the end of the road he can take a Norris? That's a very, very dangerous fight. It's the only fight in Ray's entire career that I see him taking it. It's, uh, I see that 
the uh, the rewards with a victory compared to what he stands to lose really doesn't you know balance out. But he's taking the fight, I think, to prove something. Uh, the fact that he can beat a younger uh, and a good fighter. And I think he picked the roughest one out of the entire group of present champions. I think it's a very dangerous decision. Now, you're always in the middle of these rumor mills going around. The last little birdie told me that you've been ad advised that they'd like for you to work with Sugar Ray Leonard. If they ask you, would you work with Sugar Ray Leonard? I would consider it. I, I think that it uh, would be a good experience, but it's a very, very rough fight that he's preparing for if he takes the fight with Terry Norris. Right, one last question. I've seen you retire a lot of fighters, all the way back to Helmer Kenny. But there's some that turn around and say, listen, I really don't need you. I'll go ahead and fight without you. It happened to all of us <laughs> that were in bikes. Certainly happened to you. It just happened to you recently. How would you tell Curry to go, and do you think he'll stick? I would tell Donald that definitely there's no reason for him to fight at all. And uh, I think that what he would do would be to destroy what he has accomplished. Because he's been this, we were speaking earlier during the broadcast, Marlon Stardom and I were talking at one of the best all-around technicians that we've ever saw in boxing. He would have held up in any era with any of the welterweight champions in history. But right now, he's in a division where physically he's not strong enough. And I think the, the skills have deteriorated to the point where it's, I, I don't see any chance of him beating any of the top boxers in the future. John. Uh both of us looked at this, and we're not excited, excited by it, but we know, he, he, can he do better? Is he paint himself in a box so that his peculiar talents, which is a wonderful defensive fighter and the use of, of speed and his, his jab, uh, makes it so, none we're speaking of, makes it so uh, uh, difficult for him to become a, um, an attraction, because to be an attraction, you have to punch, you have to be in all those punch outs like the Leonard uh, Hearns, uh, the, uh, the Duran uh, Leonard fights, those punch outs that you get into. Do you think that because he's as good as he is, he'll never be an attraction? I, I wonder if he's going to be an attraction, Ferdy, because first of all, although he's well-spoken and appears that he could have some charisma about him, uh, he's not a big banger, as evidenced tonight by not being able to take Donald Curry out sooner than he, than he did. And Donald, you know, uh, basically quit in the fight. I mean, there was no way he was going to win the fight, and he, he laid down, and that was it. Um, you know, Michael Nunn's a southpaw, very slick southpaw, and there's not a lot of guys out there who want to fight him <laughs> because right. the chances of them winning are nil and, nu and, yeah. and zero. And besides that, uh, they can't make enough money fighting him. So for them to risk uh, a loss on their career, which nowadays is regarded as like having cancer, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not worth it because they can't, they can't get paid enough. Sure. Let's get some personal thoughts. Marlon, uh, are you through? Have you officially uh, retired? Yes, I did retire. It's all over. There is no chance of Marlon Starling climbing back into the ring. I retired. <laughs> short, <laughs> short, making uh, no bones about it. No, no I retired. Um, all right. Emmanuel Stewart, i got to ask you about Tommy Hearns. We'd be remiss if we didn't touch on that subject. Yeah. What happened? Why the split? Well, I think at this point in time, Tommy wants to run his own career even though it's not that much time left he really wants to run his own career and he feels that he can do a better job himself and he can keep all of the money himself and uh and uh, be just as effective and that's that's his choice and if he chose uh, you know to go that route i respect it and uh, we just have to leave and go in a different direction you know life is uh stages and that's a stage of his life that he really wants to put behind him evidently was it that he just couldn't take the truth did you face him and tell him exactly how you felt about his future? Well, I had set up to have a meeting with him, you know, related to just comparing some films that we had saw of his last fight with Sugar Ray Leonard as compared to films that we had saw earlier, uh, like the James Shuler fight. And uh, we were supposed to have a meeting to discuss, you know, just his future in general. But before that happened, you know, Thomas decided that he wants to run his own career. So. All right, John, we've seen Evander Holyfield here on Showtime many times. A week from tonight, he fights for the World Heavyweight Championship against Buster Douglas. How about offering a prediction? Uh, this is going to sound like a cop-out, but I think it's a pick em fight. Really? Uh, basically, I think that uh, Buster may have lowered himself down to Evander's level or leveled the playing field by taking so much time off and enjoying him himself so much after beating Mike Tyson. But basically, if I'm forced to go I like Buster Douglas because I think he's much too big for Evander. But with Evander's determination and heart, which are probably uh, the best two qualities he has, and probably not surpassed by anybody in boxing today, uh, you cannot count him out anyway. And if the fight goes into the latter rounds, definitely got to like Evander.
All right, what do you uh, what do you think about it? Well, I think it's pretty astute on John Saracino's part. I, I agree with that. I, I remember an old old time fight uh, manager who bet on boxing all the time, and he always used to tell me three things. Never bet on a guy that's overweight and has got to lose weight and the other guy's already at weight. Never bet on a guy who hasn't fought in a long time over a guy that's active. And the final one is so simple, it's beautiful. Never bet on a loser when you can bet on a winner. Douglas has lost a few times, sometimes by choice. And the other guy, Holyfield, doesn't know how to spell lose. All right, and just a reminder, you can see that fight on pay-per-view October 25th. We thank uh, all of you for joining us tonight. That will do it for this edition of Showtime Championship Boxing. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, Steve Albert with The Fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. And we say so long, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.